I can see uh, my brother there following them with the camera. You know, we have a psychologist here. So anyone who testifies and we feel the person should be counseled, we ask the psychologist to meet them, to have a word with them, so as to put them in the right frame of mind. If you remember, almost all the women who came to testify concerning the injuries their children have gone through, Kaka's wife, we have to get the psychologist to speak to them because it is not easy going through such trauma. And that is why you see them going there. Thank you. Well, she said she would want to testify in the Bani language. You want the microphone, man. Because I'm a Quran, man. So I'm a microphone, man. I'm a that's okay in the money and tuition. Please ask her to, to relax. And then no, yeah. we are only helping her. Whatever story she came to tell us, we will just lead her along the way gradually until she finished her, telling her story. Then the panel will also ask her a few questions. Please. Give us your full name. Lambora, you're a tattoo. Chamar Kufumama. Al Hassan Muni Ratu. My name is Al Hassan Muni Ratu. Where does she live? Your Plukad. Yelma. What's that, American? You know? My Plukad. Lord, I, I, I am a native of Tamale, but I live at Ejura. And how long has she been living in Ejura? Ejura, I should not mind if you are there. Ejura, I should not mind if you are there. Lord, I have lived in Ejura for over 20 years. Does she know Sadia Kuseni? I mean, Sadia Fuseni. Yes, my lord, I know her. We both live in the same house. And Ibrahim Fuseni. Ka Ibrahim Fuseni. Lord Ibrahim Fuseni too is my husband. Okay. Now, was she in a giraffe? On the 26th of June, when Saka was uh, injured, was she in a giraffe? No, that is why Saka went to Puma, Arabi Ajira. In that way, in that way, Yes, I was in a giraffe. Okay. At that time. So she should tell the committee whatever she has, whatever information she has on that day, whatever information she has, she can tell the committee. The woman that now. And Daniel, the Pasha, and to Yelty Lord, I was in the room that was Friday night. Mm 
Di sana nu bedu man, mungkin kau jila duma nanti kau muka kamu tu nu furkanna. And I heard the sound of Kaka's motor coming towards the house. Nam cuma. Well, the, when I heard the noise of his motorbike, my room is at the outside of the house. So, Lord, I suddenly heard a noise that something had been hit. So, I came out and stood in my porch to observe the, what actually was happening. Kaina Tizan a veranda so Lord, as I was standing in the porch, I then heard that I heard somebody calling Sadia. I na um Sadia ku yara. I heard Sadia calling the name of. Saada, come out, come out, and banging at her door. That come out and see something. So this is. So. So this is. So I am not going to hear. You mean I? One chance to start something. Take part. I am not going to be able to do it. I am not going to be able to do it. So Lord, when at the time she knocked at the door of Saada, by the time she would turn. Baba Ibi had turned off and was going out. So Rasa Koyera, you mean I'm so tum barna, I'm tum barna, I'm in Chenma, you mean I'm in Chenma, I'm in Chenma. So she was shouting that somebody has caused damage and the person is running away. Come out and see the person. So, Lord, I also left my place to come to the scene. So, as I was also coming to the scene, I met Baba Hidi just on the road. And he was also leaving, going out. So this is how oyer oyer zangmi elat natinya zangmi elat kapu hana kuwe bala kuwe ni o zangmi elat natinya sa o zangmi elat mana ubileka ka kanzaya. So Lord, she said that they should bring a torchlight to see something. So when the wife brought the torchlight and they flashed it in the darkness, they saw her husband, the other's husband, lying there. So, Lord, they picked him and took him to the hospital. Lord, Kaka was taken to the hospital. Now, well, that is all that I tell this committee. Does she remember the persons who actually took to the hospital? I'm to tell you, when that Zongo Chong Hospital, ma, that Lanka Kachong Hospital, ma. The young man, the young man, the teacher, so be a good high with the young man, that Zongo Motu Yina. The young man, the teacher, you. Teacher. Hmm. Well, there is a teacher in our house, and he has a motorbike, so he took him to the hospital. 
So before uh, this incident, did she have any relationship with the family, the Sakai and his family? Did, me, or, or let me put it this way, how was their relationship like? Me, Kavi, I don't want to hear you say, I'm in a caca, no, you know, ma, what a case, no, so maybe. Yamalika, I am not a man, but I shall it. Lord, there is no bad blood between myself and Kaka's family. And are they co-tenants or they are related in any way? Amenba may be a dang neva. Ah, it's a high region. No, we are not related. We are just hiring in the room, renting the room in the house. Your house. And can she also tell the committee how long she has been living in that house with them? I'm in Virginia, you man, come on, you mother. Command, they go, you are my rumpa, you and fish. Rumpa, you and fish. Well, it's up to 20 years. Almost 20 years. So, did she also see? Uh, Kaka that night, wherever he was, he was lying. Did, he, did she herself see him? This is Agbadanya Kaka who doya in Jesus in doya. Hmm, Agbadanya on the on the day down doya. Yes, I saw him when after he had been harmed lying there. Has she given any statement to the police herself? No. Nah. I can't press the master and the surrounding area. Hmm. Do you know where I sent the chunk? But the boat is not going yet, sir. Yes, my lord. My husband took us to the police station, and we have given statement to the police. Does her husband also live in that same house? Her husband. Her husband. Yes. Now, idami, your man no ka idami. Eh. Yes, my lord. So, what has the situation been for her after her complaint to the police? So, Anchantiel Prince Ma, Anonia, Numalia Tashelma, would a car come for a member soon soon? Oh, don't was soon soon while the sign your phone was. Lord, seriously, there has been a serious bad blood between us when we lodged the complaint at the police station. Between us? Yes, who, between who, who, who. her and Kaka's family. Okay, then that, that will from the panel will ask you. So, from mommy, be my baby, shall be my baby. Yeah, okay. Well, uh, we thank you for coming before the committee to throw more light on events leading to the death of Kaka. My sister has no question for you. I do not also have any question for you. Prof also has no question for you. We, we are thankful to you for finding time to come. It's rather unfortunate that uh, things have not been the same after reaching out to the police on what you know. However, the police will continue to do their investigations. We will urge you to assist the police in whatever way you can for that matter to be fully investigated and, if possible, prosecution. We thank you. May Allah be with you. <laughs> She is the last witness for the day. I think we've taken four. Yes. yes.
In this regard, the committee will bring its work for the day to an end. We stand adjourned to tomorrow, 10 a.m., to continue our sitting. We are expecting some witnesses from Etura tomorrow. So that is the end of the day's proceedings. Thank you. And the committee is done with its work today. Uh, the, they will not hear any more testimonies today. They are done. Sitting has been adjourned to tomorrow, Wednesday. So they've heard from four witnesses. The first one, uh, a victim of the Ejra uh, disturbances, 16-year-old Mohammed Awal Misbau, whose leg has been amputated. Uh, a mother of the victim has been testifying before the three-member ministerial committee today. Uh, Salamatu Mohammed says her son, who is still on admission at the Konfanochi Teaching Hospital, had gone to buy food when he was shot. She said her son was not part of the demonstrators on the day. Uh, the second witness, Fuseni Ibrahim, resident of Ejra and a farmer co-tenant uh, with K uh, Kaka, the man whose death is alleged to have sparked the process leading to the killing and the injuries that we've recorded so far. Uh, well, following Fuseni Ibrahim, we also had a third witness, Sadia Fuseni, who happens to be Fuseni's, uh, Fuseni Ibrahim's wife, uh, the person who actually said she had seen Kaka's body or Kaka being dragged uh, after he was beaten to the bathroom, the person who first alerted his wife, remember yesterday when uh, Kaka's wife appeared before the committee, she also did indicate that uh, an, a neighbor had actually knocked on her door uh, and informed her that something was happening to her husband. Uh, this was followed by a fourth witness, Al Hassan Muniruratu, also a resident of Ejira, uh, who was also sharing uh, what she knew about uh, Kaka's death. Raymond Akwa is here. We'll try and digest what we've heard today. Uh, Raymond, yesterday, significantly, when Kaka's wife appeared, uh, first she wanted clarification as to what the committee was exactly investigating, whether or not they were investigating her husband's death. Today, we've actually heard testimonies related to Kaka's death. Interesting. And there is a criminal investigation also going on. So I was just wondering, is this to help? Are they collecting facts here to help the ongoing investigation? Interestingly, the people who spoke about the death, the two major ones, and uh, it, it, I don't think the husband of the woman is as important. Let's not forget. You know, we've been told that Kaka's brother was arrested. We've been told that a woman was actually the one who hinted of his possible involvement in all of this. This woman is the one that appeared today. Prior to her coming in, the husband appeared and laid the foundation for her to come in. So after that, another neighbor of theirs was also part of the people who actually went out there with both this woman who reported Kaka's brother and Kaka's wife to go and see Kaka's body. That is when it's supposed to be. Now, what, they, what, what was interesting about what the husband said was that her wife indeed, you know, Kaka's wife doubted the claim that the brother could have been involved because the woman who first drew her attention to an incident happening, that same woman had told her, Kaka's wife, that it was not possible, she didn't see anything. 
Yes. So, so she believed that if you didn't see anything, you can't have a different language or a different statement later on and decide to see something in the course of what, what they call it, the day or when you're being interrogated later. Her husband then explained to the committee today that pressure and fear of attacks and other things is what forced her to say, I didn't see anything. Mm -hmm. So there are different strands unraveling. And I get your point. It does appear this is the terrain the police is actively working. Because the police still, as we are told, have three people mm -hmm. who are helping them with the investigation, including a very gentleman whose involvement is being disputed by the wife of Kaka, but is being actively promoted by this woman and her husband. Her husband's explanation is that because of the incidents surrounding, that's why my wife could not say anything. My wife indeed saw that he had dragged the body, not he killing, mm -hmm. but he saw him drag Kaka's body to the bathroom. To, to the bathroom. And that's what we are currently have heard today. The, 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 it's interesting how, on one hand, and this is an observation, very small observation, that the sequence and chronology that the Kaka's wife gave clearly yesterday, the committee really were impressed with the work of the woman in a way that they, they, they clearly made it look like, oh, well, I mean, it's possible to have heard some nice words from me, but you're very intelligent and all of that. Whilst that may sound very, sound very congratulatory and very commending of a woman, some also suggested that it, it presupposes that they are sending signals, oh, you've been coached to come and tell us these things. Now, today, the committee seemed to have presumed that it's true that the woman is actually being pursued. It's true that the woman has said some truths, absolute truths that really is causing her some havoc. That's mm. the woman who pointed to the third possible, uh, what do you call it, suspect in this case. Mm -hmm. That's Kaka's brother. So in all of their statements, you can hear the committee basically saying that, well, we, we, we are happy for your courage. We are happy that you're able to stick to your truth and relay it when you have to do it. We are sad that you are being attacked for your truth. I don't know how they verified all of these. But it does suggest to me that even before they are able to weigh and weigh all of these, uh, what they call it, things said today, they are of the firm belief that indeed Kaka's brother could have been a suspect and that what the woman is saying, contrary to what Kaka's wife is saying, is supposed to be the truth today. I mean, th th those are the signals I picked from that. As to whether, and we know that if the police is doing an independent work, the comments of the committee will not affect it anyway. But the permit, police cannot also keep an eye of what is being said at the committee by the very people who they are spoken to, husband of the said woman, the woman herself, and the neighbor that came before the committee today. How the committee is going to weigh today's own against yesterday's own? Yesterday's own, which only lent credence to one very clear indication that Kaka was targeted because his own political party activists had felt that he was doing things that went against their collective interest. That Kaka had put out there statements that just suggested that his life was somehow threatened by people within his own fold. So all of them put together is what is currently being, there's another length that's been pursued vigorously today, mm. which is that Kaka could have been killed by a family member, his own blood, the brother, for reasons we are not told. Because the wife yesterday said there's no animosity between the brother mm -hmm. and Kaka. Mm -hmm. So the reasons are there still unclear. There was even unclear. a question as to the relationship between himself and the mother as well. Yes, yeah, yeah. So, and one clarification that we got today was, I mean, the, one, of them, well, one of the members of the panel asked whether this woman could be a woman who is just seeking attention. Mm -hmm. The one who proposed a third possible suspect in this case, that's Kaka's brother. Yes. yes and, and that question was to her husband. Yes, and her husband vigorously said no. She was not asked herself that question anyway. Of course, I mean, we understand from the committee, not even from the woman herself, from the committee, that this woman is in danger one way or the other and not to be protected in the presence of what she's supposed to be doing now, maybe in the police grip. Going forward, there are still outstanding issues that have not been settled yet. Outstanding issues including the very fact that the gentleman we were promised will be here since last week. If the committee finishes work on Friday, which was the original timing, we would have still not heard from the police, com the military commander on the ground who commanded troops, which ended up shooting. And well, they say shooting not to kill, but to maim. Mm -hmm. But incidentally, we ended up having some people dying as a result of the shooting. There's also dispute currently as to whether it is their bullets from their gunshot that ended up killing the people 
or bullets from the protesters or somewhere else could have actually contributed to the death of the people in this case. All of these are still very gray areas that this committee will figure out. But I agree with you. Today seems to have jumped a little bit. And because there were no other further exploratory questions mm -hmm. about incidents leading to, it sounded more like today was what was within the terrain of what the police were supposed to be dealing with. Mm -hmm. Because of the lack of questions that focus exactly on what are the incidents that led to the protest and the subsequent killings that happened that day? Well, significantly, um, you know, Fuseni Ibrahim uh, talked about the fact that the day that he, he gave that vivid description uh, because of the account of his wife, he was not in town. Mm -hmm. However, the subsequent days he was. I was expecting that there would be direct questions as to the things that followed days after, because that's what led to the, what the, we recorded. I get your point. And uh, I, yes. I thought that there would be specific questions to that in terms of uh, what he witnessed, where he was, how, uh, you know, this, things like that. But we didn't get it. I think the issue of the comments... Obviously, we are, not, we are not within the... I mean, of course, I mean, this committee has the space to do what is required of it and what it says it should be doing. Uh, already, there have been questions about whether it's staying within, outside, or what really is this remedy in the first place. Mm. So... Some of these may suggest to the ordinary person that what's the point? But you may not know that they have a bigger picture in mind. Mm. They, they, they have an objective they're driving at. Absolutely. Hopefully, that objective is in line with what they were asked to do. Mm. And they achieve the purpose for which they were put together. And finally, when they're able to conclude their work in a couple of days from now, we will come to some meaningful appreciation of what really has happened and get a better understanding of it. What I'm not clear in my mind of is, I, I know that the George Naul Committee on Cocaine, its report was released. I hope this committee's report will also be released because it just suggests to us that, unlike what's made up for in the Commission of Inquiry position, which requires that it should be released, even with the white paper, they, 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 there are no specific provisions that suggest that this equally should go through a similar process. Mm. And the effect of it, uh, what they call the report, is what really is not in doubt, it is in somehow being doubted here. Except that if they produce their report, and in the interest of transparency, being a very important matter of public interest, they will let all of us see their reports before we get a report from the interior minister going to the executive president. Mm. So that's where the difference should be. So that it's not like the report just went to the interior minister. Interior minister produced something and gave it to the president without we knowing at every stage what exactly the content of the press report is. What did they give to the interior minister? And what did the interior minister finally give to the executive president? So th those things will help us appreciate the work they have done and why we had questions right from this point about the work they have done and what they are doing and whether or not those questions will be answered in the course of the engagements they have done so far. Great. Thanks, Raymond. Uh, quite well, that will be it from us. Uh, we will look out for what happens on day seven. It's a wrap for day six. Thank you for your company. We've got the midday news coming up in less than 10 minutes.